Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AnnoyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at nomenclature um, and in particular we're going to look at those with functional groups attached to them as well. Um, there is another video um, that's probably best to watch the other video first before this one uh, and that looks into nomenclature with chains uh, and with no functional groups and it goes into a lot of detail in terms of the numbering system which I'll just um, lightly skim over in this one. But if you want to have a look at that video, then just click on the link just below, uh, and you can have a look at that one. Um, but like I say, this one's going to be um, nomenclature with functional groups. Um, now, I've got my um, IU pack up there, and again, they might ask you uh, in a question, they might ask you to give you, um, they'll ask you to write down the IU pack nomenclature um, of a compound, and IU pack is basically just the rules um, that um, governs the naming of molecules and it's an international standard and it stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Now we've got a set of rules here that was introduced in that other video um, and basically this is the rules that um, we need to follow to be able to name and um, number a molecule properly. So um, when we've got our table here which looks at our um, what we call our root chain um, and again our root chain is the longest continuous chain of carbons in the molecule uh, and this will help us with that and it will also help us with any branching that we may have in the molecule as well. So I've got that down there for reference so we can see what we're doing. So let's get started. So let's have a look at this first one here. So the first job we have to do is find out the longest continuous chain and we can see here the longest continuous chain is three. Uh, once we've done that uh, we then need to uh, find the functional group and the functional group in this case is OH. Again, there's a video that looks into the functional groups that you need to know for AS chemistry. And if you're not sure on the functional groups, then just click on the link below. Uh, you can have a look at that video. Uh, and it shows you about, um, well, it tells you about the different functional groups that you can come across. But I'll assume that you know the functional groups um, that are actually on this video here. So this is an alcohol. So we've got an OH group. And alcohols always end in all. So this one's relatively straightforward. We have three carbons and we have a functional group um, and we can see that actually this alcohol is actually on the um, first carbon if we had to number it and uh, we've got to number using the lowest number combination which is this step here so if we number it from one two three and um, if we number it that way then the OH actually sits on the first carbon if we numbered it the other way one two three it would sit on the third carbon so the lowest possible number combination is numbering it from this side so when we actually write this, um, we should have um, our three carbons means that we have prop. So this is going to be prop. Uh, we put a hyphen in between there because we're going to introduce our number. And this is on our first carbon. And we're going to put a hyphen in there again. And we're going to put all. Um, so, oops, that's a mistake. So that should be propan one all. So you chop off the E. Um, from the uh, propane bit, which is your normal three carbon length, and we just put in the one and the all, and that signifies that our alcohol is on sitting on the first carbon on a propane molecule, and that's what that bit means. Now, if we come over to this one, this one's called an isomer um, of the other two, and um, it's actually a positional isomer, and um, there is a video that looks into these different types of isomers, so if you just click on the link below, and you can have a look at these isomers, and um, this is positional, um, because we've actually changed the position of our functional group. So this one, instead of being propan 1 ol is actually propan um, 2 ol Again, the numbering systems, it doesn't really matter in this case which way we number, because either way, the middle carbon is always going to be the second carbon. So this is going to be propan 2 ol and our alcohol group is sitting on our second carbon. Now, if we come on to a little bit more of a more of a complex, uh, more complex one. So this one here, we actually have two functional groups in here, and you can see them here, the CL and the BR. And what we have to do is use the same rules, find the longest chain, and um, but this time we're going to uh, take into account both of them. So longest chain, one, two, three, four, four carbons. So that would give it as a butte molecule. Uh, find the functional groups. Um, in this case, these are chloro and bromo ones, so these are prefixes instead of suffixes, like the alcohol where it went on the end. Um, then we're going to number the carbon chains in the longest, uh, the longest chain, which is this one here, and make sure that numbering is the smallest uh, combination of numbers where our, uh, where our functional groups are. So we can see if I number it, so 
from this side, I'll get one, two, three, four. And if I number it from this side, it'll be one, two, three, four. Now, because both of our functional groups lie on the second and third carbon, either way, with whichever way we number it, it doesn't really matter in this case. So I'm just going to number it from there. One, two, three, four. Now, you can see that we have a chloro group hanging off the second carbon and a bromo group hanging off the third carbon. Now, once we've done that, we then um, write down the number where they are. That's what we've done at the fourth step. The fifth step is chains are written in alphabetical order and so are um, functional groups as well. So you can see we've got a chloro and a bromo there. Um, and so what we have to do is put them in alphabetical order. Now, B comes before C. Um, you never put them in numerical order. It's always alphabetical. So we're going to start with three first, because we've numbered that as three. So that's going to be three bromo uh, hyphen. And then we've got chlorine hanging off the second one. So we're going to put two chloro. Uh, and then what we have is four carbons, which means but. So that's just going to be butane. Now you can see that might look a bit odd because we've got three first, then two. And um, remember, it is alphabetical and not numerical, so don't be tempted to put the two first, then the three. Although in this case, it wouldn't really matter because the molecule would mean the same thing. Um, but yeah, must go in alphabetical, B before C. Okay, move on to this one. This is a bit different because we've got an, a functional group that actually straddles between two carbons, so it's not on one particular carbon. Now, this is where the numbering system comes in very, very useful. So if we see our longest carbon chain is still four again, so it's but, um, and we need to introduce our numbering system to it as well. Now if we number from this side, we get one, two, three, four. But if we number from this side, we get one, two, three, four. Now numbering from this side gives us an alkene with the lowest um, number going from this side. So if I number it from here, one, two, three, four. Um, now you can see that the double bond straddles between the first and the second carbon, but the rule states that it must have the lowest number combination. So the lowest number that this double bond is bonded to is the first carbon. So we say that this alkene is bonded to the first carbon in terms of numbering. So again, we write down our naming of the molecule. So this is going to be um, but, so we're going to put that there. This is going to be but, which goes in there. And unlike your alcohol, where we put the an in here, we don't for the alkene, because it's not. The an actually signifies that it could be an alkane. Uh, this is not an alkane, so we drop the an bit, and we just put but. Uh, the alkene, the double bond, sits on the first carbon. It's the lowest number between out of these two. So it's going to be but, dash, one, dash, and then we just put en on the end, because it's an alkene. And again, we separate letters and numbers with dashes, and numbers and numbers with, high, with commas, which we'll come on to in a minute. So if we come on to the next one, now this is a one with, um, again, a slightly different functional group. We have a carboxylic acid group on the end here, and we have two chlorines that are sitting on this uh, hydrocarbon chain here. So um, again, we need to number the system. Now, when you have a carboxylic acid, um, we assume that the carboxylic acid takes the position of carbon one. So we're going to number from the carboxylic acid and we include the carbon that's actually on here. So this is one, two, three, four. And you can see that this carbon in the carboxylic acid is included in this long chain. So we have four carbons in here. So this is but on this one here. Uh, and our obviously our carboxylic acid takes position one. So everything else is numbered from there. So we have two chlorine on the second carbon and chlorine on the third carbon. We have two identical groups there. So we use di, tri, and tetra in this case, just like we did in the other one where we're doing, talking about uh, chains. We do exactly the same functional groups as well. So uh, in terms of the numbering for this or the naming of it, you can see that we have a two and a three. So we're going to write that down here. So we have two comma three, because we have uh, chlorine on both of them. Uh, we have two chlorines, so we're going to use di, which is down here. So it's di, chloro. Uh, and then this bit, one, two, three, four carbons, but we've got a carboxylic acid group on the end. So this is butanoic acid. There you go. So that's the name of that one. So it'll be two, three, 
dichloroglutinoic acid. So you can see we've got a varying number of um, carbocations, we've got a varying number of different functional groups that are in there. And the final one, now this one is even more tricky. We've got a lot going on here. We've got um, iodine here, and we've got three iodines around the same carbon. So that's three different, uh, three functional groups. Um, we also have an alkene, and we also have a bit of branching as well. So we've mixed everything together. Um, and you've got to be um, really um, careful when you've got ones like this, because there's a lot going on in there. So the first thing, count our carbons in the longest continuous chain. In this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons in there. We could number it like this, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter in this case because the longest chain is either there or it's along there. So I'm just going to do for simplicity, I'm just going to go straight along because it makes it a little bit easier to work out. So we're going to put our um, uh, numbering in there and it says that we have to find out the functional group. Um, now we've got a few functional groups in here. Um, but the one that has to go on the end is the alkene. We always end molecules with alkene, even though we've got the iodine in there. Iodine is actually a prefix that so goes before anyway. Um, and this would be a prefix as well, which is your branching. So the only thing which goes on the end is the ene bit at the end. So if we start a number, we have to number from this side. So we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. And um, the reason why is because we have three lots of these. So three lots of one would give three, uh, and we have a second carbon there, so that would be on carbon two, three, four. So one, 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 and then two and four is a lot smaller than if we numbered it from this side, which would make it two, and then three, and then five, five, five. Um, so it will be a lot easier numbering from this side, and that's where we number from. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. Um, now we have varying functional groups, so we get all the prefix ones out of the way first. And so these are the ones, the iodines and your methyls. Now you have to go in alphabetical order. So in this case, it will be, we'll do this in red. In this case, we have an iodines and we have a methane. Now I become, com, becomes, uh, well, comes before N, so we do the iodines first. We have three iodines this time, and we have to number all the positions of the three iodines. But because we've got three identical ones, obviously they're all iodines, then we have to use tri because we have three of them. So the numbering is on, we've got three iodines on the first carbon, so that's going to be one, one, one. We have to put all three numbers down. You can't just put one tri iodo. You have to put one, 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 dash, tri, and then iodo, Okay, so that's our iodine, and you can see that we have a methyl group on there as well. So we put a hyphen, and the methyl group is hanging off the fourth carbon, so that's going to be 4-methyl. It's going to go on to there. Um, and then we have our lex length chain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is pent, but we have a double bond sitting on the between the second and third carbon, we pick the lowest number out of the two, so that's the second carbon. So this one is going to be pent 2 E. That's exactly what we're going to put on there. So pent, now I'm going to run out of space here, so I'm just going to finish it off down there. Pent 2 E. So the name of this molecule is 111 triiodo 4 methyl and then pent 2 E with that double bond on there. So a long molecule and it looks massive, but the whole thing is strung together in one in one word. There's no there's no spaces in there apart from the ethanoic acid one there. But that is effectively how you can um, name molecules. And the crucial thing again is to follow your longest continuous carbon chain. And once you've found that, you then try and identify your numbers, uh, your functional groups. Where are they on the chain? And make sure that you if you have three of the same functional group. That you and they're on the same atom that you have to write the one three times. So there's a number for each functional group. It's not good enough just to write one tri iodo, and you have to put the tri in there as well. But that's it. I hope that helps. Bye.